I play video games now in my living room here, home theater setup on an 83 inch LG G2, almost exclusively on PC. I sold off my Xbox, sold off my PlayStation, triple downed then I guess you could say on PC is my gaming platform of choice. But PC can be a real hassle when you're not at a desk, at a full mouse and keyboard setup and all of that. But I've done a few things in my setup to kind of mitigate those pain points and make living room PC gaming be as easy as possible. So I wanted to talk about those, those strategies here. The first one that I'll say is I've had this for a long time, but for basically command and control, having a little wireless mouse pad keyboard is really, really almost mandatory. This is a Logitech uh, K30. They have a couple, they've made a couple different models of this or variants over time, but basically anytime I need to do real command and control, update drivers, manage the computer, right? This is what comes out. It's, it's not very large. It's easy to put in a drawer here in my coffee table of the living room and have handy. And so I don't game then on a mouse and keyboard when I use my computer, even for playing first person shooters and all that stuff. I'm, I'm a controller uh, person. So I use the, the Microsoft wireless uh, Xbox controller adapter, and I've got a handful of various Xbox controllers, a couple of Series 2 Elites, a couple of regular Series controllers as well. So right off the bat, one of the simplest things that you can do to make your PC gameable in a living room space like this is have simple wireless command and control, and at least maybe stick to those games that are that, that you're comfortable playing on a controller. I'm comfortable playing anything on a controller pretty much, including again those shooters and stuff, but I don't play super highly competitive first person type games. If I did, then I probably would be more inclined to be doing the, the PC gaming in an office setting at a desk, full mouse keyboard, and all of that stuff. But for, for this type of environment, basically trying to counselify the PC, this, this works great, and that this is really my, my weapon of choice <laughs> for all the games that I play. My second strategy for kind of keeping the PC gaming simple and clean is that this computer is only used for gaming. I don't do any office stuff on it. I don't do any other personal use. It's not used for the YouTube channel or any editing or anything like that. The Windows installation is as thin as absolutely possible. No extra programs installed. We're talking Windows itself, drivers, game launchers, video games, and that's really it. Nothing else on that computer. And part and parcel with that, another element of like using it very well that I found is that I want to be able to have the PC easily clean boot every time I go to use it. Um, I've noticed some inconsistencies. For example, the, the television here supports native NVIDIA G-Sync, but it loses NVIDIA G-Sync if the PC goes to sleep and then is woken back up. It reverts to like regular HDMI VRR. And, and just in general, I think it's always better um, for the, the stability and operation of your system, your games, you stand a better chance of everything working well if you're clean booting every time. So I recently added this to the setup. This is a remote power switch. So my gaming computer is actually downstairs on top of my equipment rack. If you take a look at some of the other videos on the channel, the rack tours and all that, um, it'll showcase that pretty much, or the last video I did where I installed the 4090 GPU. So I don't have direct access to the computer to be able to turn it on. And for the longest time, I was just putting it to sleep. I'd use that Logitech keyboard, put it to sleep when I wanted to play again, wake it back up. And that was fine from a, a quickness perspective, but I don't think it was always the best from a reliability perspective. So instead now, right here in my coffee table, in the drawer of the coffee table, I keep the power switch. I have the PC plugged into the adapter that came in this box. And then this little wireless power switch just has an on off button. Boom, I can click it and the PC boots up clean. The, the motherboard BIOS is set that upon, re upon restoration of power, the computer will turn on. So basically this, this being off or that switch plug being off is kind of a complete separation from the system uh, of power itself. So when this goes back on, it's a restoration of power. The motherboard and the BIOS settings automatically start the computer. It works awesome, let me demonstrate. So when I'm done with the gaming session, I just shut the computer completely down and then I use the remote to actually turn that power switch off. Next time I'm ready to play, grab the remote, click it on. 
The downside is that this makes it take a little bit longer to get back in to a gaming session because we are waiting for basically a cold boot of the computer and all of that. But I'll take reliability over a little bit of startup delay basically any time, making sure that I'm always getting the, the right uh, handshake connection, refresh the HDMI, get the, v, the right VRR and all of that. And notice I have a couple other things set up here. I have the computer set up so that I don't have to manually log in to my actual Microsoft and Windows account. We're also starting something up here and I'll get to that in a second. So this is totally like council-fied, almost hands-free, PC ready to go, fresh, clean, booted every single time. I do look forward to actually having the computer in the living room. One of my long-term goals is to bring my living room gear actually up into the room and I wanna rebuild the computer into a nicer, like more furniture-esque style case which would give me the ability to not even have to use the wireless switch. I can just walk over there and tap the button right on top of it. But in the interim, while that PC is away in another room not accessible, this surely beats walking downstairs and manually turning the computer on. And again, with the ability to log in without having to put in a password or a passcode, everything's just easy. By the time I sit down, click that on, you know, grab a drink of water, get my controller ready and all that stuff, the computer's booted up and we're sitting here at this awesome UI. So this is kind of my number three recommendation and something that I've been really waiting for, kind of like striving for, for a while. This is the Steam Deck UI running on a full-blown 4090 gaming PC in a living room setting, pure awesome. So what's the benefit of this? Well, I now have a fully controller-driven, council-fied PC UI. I don't have to take that mouse pad and keyboard combo out and even bother to touch it unless or until I actually need to do some kind of administration on the computer. This is fantastic. I'm, I, I think the idea of big picture mode in Steam has been great for a long time. I don't think the implementation of and the UI design of big picture mode in Steam has been good for, for very long at all. But the Steam Deck UI is just leaps and bounds so, so much better. So this isn't part of regular Steam today, at least at the time of making this video. In order to get access to the Steam Deck UI, you do have to enable Steam client betas. And then there's a um, special, like you have to make a special shortcut, uh, put an extra kind of argument into the launch of Steam. I did that, I made that shortcut. And then I put that shortcut in my startup folder of my Windows 11 installation. So as you saw, the computer booted up we get the Windows desktop screen there for maybe a handful of seconds, several seconds, and then boom, we're in right in to the Steam Deck UI. I will say though, right off the bat, this is not entirely flawless yet. It is beta. They're working on it. Ultimately, I, I do believe that the Deck UI, hopefully with some other more like large screen optimizations, will come to native Steam. It will be the replacement for big picture mode and all of that. And I very, very much look forward to that day but we've already got it working here in the interim. So this is just so fantastic. Being able to get to, you know, home, library, the store, settings, friends stuff, all of it, manage installations, look at your downloads, update your games. Again, basically it, it's, it's a, it's a councilified computer, a controller driven councilified computer. This is, I've been striving for this for so long. And we're doing it without any like third party software or third party like launchers or, or like, you know, special UIs just built into Steam. I mean, if you're gaming on PC, of course, you're very likely, I think, using Steam. I try to make Steam the center point of all of my PC gaming use. That's probably another like, you know, three or three B uh, type of item, which is I really try to avoid messing around with extra launchers and all that when I can and just try to focus my gaming around one. In this case, Steam has all these features, all these capabilities, and it just makes it so, so fantastic. And even still, even to shut the computer down or be done with my session, I don't still even have to get out the mouse and keyboard, the mouse pad and keyboard. I can just go right here to power, and there it is, turn off system. Everything shuts down, hit this guy off, and for all of the time that I'm not gaming, the PC is off, no problem no power consumption, nothing like that. It's, it's dead, it's quiet. And when I'm ready to play, boom, we're back in with the remote switch. We're right into the Steam UI. I've got my controller in my hand and off we go. So now I actually just have to find the time to use this thing 
and play some games. I think it's finally time. I really want to play play that 2018 God of War maxed out 120 FPS uh, ish here with this 4090. So thanks so much for watching. More PC content to come. Check out this last video I did where I, I actually installed the MSI Gaming X Trio 4090 that I bought. And yeah, more to come. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and all of that. Look down in the description for some ways to support the channel. And come on back for more home theater discussion and fun.